One of the very pleasant consequences of the redux was that now I could avoid my accidents because I knew when they would happen. Uh, really? Because, well, I think changing future should change the future, well, well whatever. Of course, they did not protect me from my own new accidents that I caused myself. Exactly. I, I recalled one that was particularly bad, at least bad looking. Also, what was more, it was pretty embarrassing for me. It all started on that Sunday afternoon, the 11th of April. April. It was already a nice weather for biking. Obviously, you call for most people. I was regularly biking at that time. Not too much, but unless I had my weekly dose of fresh free air, he was unhappy. So I was taking out my bike, dressed up, and on the streets, my usual road. I look out the window just before I left to see the sky get darker in the far distance. It was for sure going to rain, but not until at least an hour or so. I still had time to bike a little before it started to pour down and eliminated every opportunity of biking for that day. I went my usual way and I was really looking forward for the next segment, the riverbanks. Sometimes the wind played some tricks, but usually it was just a wonderful ride. The riverbanks was a long straight way to which the road I came from linked. Also, I came from above, so I could build up really good speed, then survive a really sweeping bend, which would send me straight to the banks, which was so beautiful to ride at that velocity. Mostly, I rode the whole bank section very fast, just to stop under the bridge where I had to cross the street to get to the city segment of my road. That afternoon, I had a great ride. I took the bend that catapulted me on the banks of straight. I felt just a little of rain starting to fall. I guess I misjudged the speed of the whole thing. I stormed past peaceful walking people and some beginner bikers. In a few minutes I already approached the bridge and everything was nearing to its end. I was just about to look at the crossing whether no cars were there, so I could run a red when the rain really started to pour down. Like a rocket I dashed under the bridge, but after that very dry section I came out onto a wet pavement. I needed to break. I looked around at the situation. There was nothing unusual in this. The fact that the pavement was slightly slippery posed no problem for me. But too bad for me, I saw a girl. It was Ikiko. She was on the other side of the street. Thoughts flashed through my head. Does she live near here? And then, I don't know, this little child just decided to run across my path or something. These small children are really unpredictable, that action was almost suicidal. I hit the brake softly and steered to the side. Unfortunately, there was a hole dug because there was some construction going on. I knew I could not do anything. I blocked the rear wheel to slow down the impact and then crashed into one of the mounds of soil near the hole. There was nothing I could do. I fell off my bike, hit the ground sideways and glided onto the wet grass. When I came to a stop, I slowly checked myself. Nothing. I was fine. The parent of the child caught the child and started to tell him off. Then he rushed to me, but I just said I was okay. I went and collected my bike. No, bandage, no damage there either. The soft soil was a lifesaver. And so, even though I was really dirty and got some apologies from the parents of that little child, Hideo, I could be happy that nothing happened. I had to rush home my own way. When I was about to get my bike, I thought about Ikiko. It was so embarrassing. I must have looked like an idiot falling off my bike like that. In my fantasies, I often impressed girls by flawless riding, and this was the exact opposite. Better not even think about it. I saw Ikiko run under the bridge. I didn't look at her. I felt sorry for her. Ikiko, she was really in a bad position. All it started the previous Thursday. It also happened we were having some of our lessons in other classrooms and so on Monday. We were always in a special chemistry classroom, a semi-laboratory. It had a desk just like a regular classroom, but there was some chemical equipment up front. Oh man, I wished my chemistry was like that.
I mean, never any uh, examples of what it looks like, what you can uh, well mix with what and stuff like that. I guess that's why I found chemistry boring. As usual, the desks were in a bad condition and basically everyone was writing on them. Which of course even worse than the situation. It was already in the winter that Ryosuke wrote something the under, in there under a false name, which had the effect that the girl Ihiko answered to it. And so a small conversation between those two was started and it grew bigger and bigger. Later they would leave small papers hidden within the desk and answer to those. I observed this with concern, as I never liked when someone was playing with someone else. Ryosuke, he was a good person, but this he was encouraged by his friends into and it made him go further each time the notes were exchanged. In a word, he brought Ikiko to like him. I found out that they were doing this only by coincidence, when I happened to walk past them and catch a few words of what they were talking about. Of course, I reported this to Mori and we had something to talk about for a few days. On Friday, the day after it happened, I got some new information from Nami about the whole incident. It turned out that Ikiko was her sister's classmate and her best friend. They were first graders, so Nami had first-hand information. She told me that the mysterious person who was writing her notes finally wanted to meet her, giving her the time and the place. Ikiko didn't even, even go home because she didn't want to miss the time that was set for their meeting and th three Ryosuke and his friends came and from a distance had their laughs at Ikiko. Luckily they went, then went away and left Ikiko to wait for a boy she liked who never existed. It was April the first day, the first of April, a day when you pull jokes on other people. Oh man, and Ryosuke did it. Nami was well informed, possibly someone from Ryosuke's friends told her about it. Needless to say, Nami was depressed. Ikiko was set to write one more note asking what happened, but then Nami's sister Reika probably already told her. That day I wasn't walking around the school with Mori but with Nami. It seems she wanted to pour her heart out and she really hated Ryosuke's guys for doing it. I also realized how much of a humiliation that meat must be. Ikiko may really have felt something but they were just laughing. I understand that people will act differently when in a group, but perhaps this was too much. The next day I saw the two of them. I knew Nami's sister Reika and the girl by her side walking around the school during the break must have been Ikiko. When me and Mori greeted Reika, Ikiko almost looked away. She was clearly uneasy and so we just passed by the two girls. And so, now, under the bridge in the rain, I tried to look away. I noticed a second girl near, near when I stood. She was really very pretty, but I must have completely humiliated myself by falling from my bicycle. I looked at her a few times when she was looking in another direction. Soon the heaviest of the rain was over. I decided to go for it and head home. Looking at the other side of the street, Ikiko wasn't there. She probably went away in the rain. Did she see me? Does she hate me because I am in the same class as Ryosuke? I tried to realize all this before I took out my bike that Sunday. Sure I could stay at home, but I didn't want to. I just needed to slow down before the bridge and expect the child. I was already storming through the riverbanks when I felt the first raindrops fall. Everything was going to the way I, it should. I was already, already looking for Ikiko. I never attempted to correct the situation with Ikiko. It was because I felt it was wrong. I already felt bad about what I did with Mori. There were a few times even during clothes day where I tried to intervene in things I perhaps shouldn't have intervened. I tried to protect Mori from disappointment, but on the other hand even that disappointment, even that rejection that he received anyway, was in a way something that was right to happen. Had I prevented him from sending the letter to Kotona, he would have regrets. And it was the same with Ikiko. It was easy to see myself as some kind of a hero protecting Ikiko from being made fun of 
what was I doing her a favor? Perhaps that was her way, perhaps that was the way things were meant to be for her. Even that humiliation, disappointment, love. I would take away all the good feelings she would have for the person she most probably dreamed about. And so, on that day, when I was rushing near the riverbanks, my only concern was if I could prevent that accident. I looked for Ikiko and I saw her just like before. But I also saw the small child. One, two, three, now. I kept an eye on Ikiko as well. She was there, walking probably. She also noticed the rain, so her steps were faster and faster. But I had to watch out for the child. There, I saw it. I just needed to keep my eyes on it. It was walking with his parents. Everybody noticed the rain and wanted to seek cover under the bridge. I finally, finally realized it. That's why the child was running far that way. I steered my bike to the side and braked softly. I saw little Hideo run towards the bridge. I was safe. I looked around and then... I saw a cane. She was also running towards the bridge. A cane. It was her hair. My first big true love. I don't know, my wonderful girlfriend, Akane. She was so beautiful. My mind was in such a shock. How should I react? And then I saw the mounds. Because I looked at Akane rushing under the bridge, I completely lost track of what was happening around me. The hole was there, the mounds were there, I was going to crash. So what should I do? I knew it wouldn't be that bad, I would land on the grass. Should I make it seem I slip on the wet pavement? I break hard, I blocked the rear wheel, started sliding sideways into the construction site. But what was I expecting? My first thought was to make it seem I was hurt to evoke sympathy. Maybe Akane would notice me, I don't know. Maybe the parents of Hideo and she would want to help me. But Akane was my former girlfriend. We broke up, I could still remember. It was okay, it was mutual, and we remained friends. Also with Hikaru, so what exactly was I trying to accomplish here? Make her my friend? How? Ikiko, she was standing there, on the other side of the street under the bridge. I tried not to look at her, but didn't really avoid looking in her direction. I don't know whether she saw me, probably not, but still, there was no room for her now. It was all about Akane now. I woke up from my thoughts, I was sliding sideways, and then in an instant I decided. I let the brake go, step on it really hard to regain balance and went sideways on the move. Easy, the hole, I just jumped through it. I knew the tricks now, all the riding techniques I learned later on. I landed on the slipper grass, hit the re brake and even managed to turn out so gracefully anyone well, would be impressed. I then quickly rode my bike under the bridge. See, I had an excuse, it was raining. I could seek shelter. She seek shelter. And so there I was. They all must have seen what I have done with my bike. I got from my way off my bike and leaned it on the bridge pillar. It was so I didn't know what to feel. There I was, standing near Akane. I didn't know what to do. I felt weak. I didn't want to recall everything that happened between me and Takane. She was my first girlfriend. I knew so much about her. Starting with where she grew up. For, through her favorite color. To the more intimate things. Mm. Was that bad? Oh, I knew my time would come. We would meet on a boat trip. So, should I really do something? Or better, what could I do? I barely could talk to Kotone or Miori. How should I talk to her? But then again, I felt like I could talk to her anytime. She was my friend. I would normally greet her and we'd have a great talk. But now it was only from my side. She didn't know me. No, I couldn't do it. Besides, all was settled. I didn't want to be with her. It was over between us. Just friends. Really? I couldn't do it. No. I waited for a while and then I decided to head home. I watched Akane go off in the rain even before me. 
I knew the way she was going. She was going home. She lived in the southern part of the city. On my way home, while hopelessly trying to stay at least 10% dry, I thought about what happened. I would have to be very strong now. I would have to process what happened and I would have to deal with it. I really hated when the moment took over. In fact, nothing happened. I saw Ikiko, who meant nothing to me. And I saw my former girlfriend. So what? That happens. I thought about it nevertheless. I thought of what Ryosuke would do in my situation. He and Jun were still years away from becoming a couple, but what would he do? Surely the Jun he would fall in love with isn't the Jun he knows now. Would he still try to make her his? Despite the fact that perhaps it was those few more years of experience that Jun and he needed to be able to make it work between the two of them. And he'd have a problem with it, because he would be used to just come up to June and kiss her because he loves her. He would be denied the most normal thing in the world. 